Away, what's up? I'm Dalen Oliver. And I'm Carl Lewis. And welcome to the Sports Podcast. That sounded like it. Yeah, that actually did. But let's get to the show. Oh, you're going to go to the show? Okay. Yeah, it's our recording, so we can take our time. Well, I have a podcast at four, so not so much time. Oh. So you can do our intro. I actually like that intro because I want people to know how committed you are to many podcasts, but more importantly, okay. most committed to ours. Ladies and gentlemen, aware, a good, good, good evening, morning, afternoon, good everything, and welcome to the sports podcast with myself, Dalen Oliver, and Carl Lewis. Away. Hey, Dalen. Lovely to be here, although you, you sound so loud in my earphones, but I still, I still like sound... hearing your voice. No, it's fine, I, I man. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Welcome to the sports podcast. We are uh, yes, uh, our yes. first official episode of the introductory. First, first after official in- episode. <laughs> 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 you can hear it's our first episode. We don't know when to talk and keep quiet. <laughs> Balls in your court. <laughs> You know what it is? It's like we were on our first date at Cavendish back in the day. For yeah. those of you who don't know, Cavendish Square in the Gangachi, in the, in the corridor between the shops is where everybody used to meet before they went to Spur or Fubo. And Carl and I are in that spot where we're waving now. And the other one's waving back. We don't know if I must say hi or not. But it's our first episode. And um, I, I messaged Carl in the week because I was panicking. I'm like, but should we change our, our name to Injury Time? Isn't the sports podcast boring? Are you sure? <laughs> Like a week after saying this is our name, you want to change it. I mean, how does that even work? I but know, I know. At, le- at least you came to your senses and we're sticking with the sports podcast. And we've got such a, I'm excited about the show here, to be very honest with you, discussing so many uh, topics below, you know. Yeah, so many. We start, I mean, we're still going to start off with the Proteus in New Zealand. Yeah. I yep. feel like that's our sport, you know, kick it in. That's our sport, yeah. That's what connects us, me and you. Yes. And then we'll move on to other sections where we'll talk about Kylian Mbappe. It's a yep. whole range of things. IPL, Super Bowl, and then we'll look ahead to the weekend. So there's a lot of content and we're hoping to do this in half an hour, you say, Dylan. 30 minutes. I'm very excited about that. Now, you know, the fun part about Carl telling you what's coming up in the show is that before we recorded, we agreed because, you know, I don't have sports knowledge like at all. I literally just lie about everything. I said, Carl, can I tell the people what's coming up? And then he said, for sure. And then he panicked and he did everything. So now what I'm most excited about is your analysis, Carl, because each section that we have is really dope. We're going to keep it quick fire, 30 minutes, and just tell the, the, the listeners at home in their car, the office, wherever they are, like how we've structured it and packaged it to make sure that it's like a bite-sized. Okay, so we'll start off with one big thing. So that's the main talking point of our podcast, which will be South Africa playing the first test against New Zealand. Then in shorter bite-sized sections we're going to talk there's a section called we need to talk about this we'll be covering the ipl the super bowl and some of the formula one car launches and then who is hot just guys that uh guys and girls that we feel are are kind of shaking up the sports world or we really feeling at the moment in particular me who i'm feeling at the moment and then thereafter we're going to do looking ahead to the weekend and what we go, what we'll be watching, what we think. Um, yeah, so basically that's the show. And we're going to try and do this in half an hour. I don't think it's going to happen. But uh, it's, you got to hope. You got to hope. No, you got to have a we goal. Have to, we have to do it. My stove is on. Well, not my stove, my plates on my stove. So if we don't finish in 30 minutes, my flat burns down, Carl Lewis. That's what we need to do. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's how our timer is structured. Dalen's flat either burns down or we finish this podcast in 30 minutes. So let's get into it. I'm very excited. The Proteus up against New Zealand, Louis. Um, New Zealand coming off the back end of a one-all draw to, to Bangladesh. The Proteus, lots of confidence. They beat India 2-1. New Zealand second in the world. The Australia just popped them now. Um, but mentally, SA is in a really good space. Uh, speak to me. The 17-man squad. There's no Norkia. There's no Keegan Peterson. What's mm. happening? Who's our batting and bowling lineup? Do we have a chance? Yeah, I think, well, you definitely have a chance. I think before we chat about the selection, I think it's important to give context to the, to the series and mm. kind of the history of, of the South Africa versus New Zealand relationship. It's been pretty one-sided. And South Africa 
have won 13 out of the 16 test series that they've played. Uh, New Zealand have only beaten South Africa four times in 45 attempts. And they don't have any Kane Williamson. And obviously, Ross Taylor's retired. So yes. there's a lot going our way. There's, there's a lot going our way in terms of us trying to win. I should not be saying us, South Africa, but I mean, it is us. I want us to we win. We bias. We bias. Exactly. And the last time we actually played each other was five years ago in 2017. So a lot has changed. I mean, New Zealand were literally the world, you know, the best test team in the world. They yes. played in that final against India. But uh, South Africa is filled with confidence. I think you, 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 uh, you said it so nicely. Uh, how many things, how, how much confidence these guys are going after a massive win against um, India. I, I thought that was almost a turning point for South African cricket in a sense, because South African cricket has not been in a, in a good space, both on the field and of course off it. But that India series just gave, I think the, the fans also someone like me and you, uh, and not only the players, just a little boost like, damn, okay, we do have the talent. We can do yeah. something. Don't you think? Uh Andres, Brad, gave us the belief to, without being sarcastic, wake up in the early hours of the morning and want to watch us play in the audible time zones again. You know what I mean? I think prior to the mm. India series, a lot of us were questioning whether or not we'd actually set our alarm for a 12 a.m., <laughs> a 1 a.m., not, not at all, bra. But now we want to, and, and props to Dean Alga for leading from the front as, as captain. Um, yeah. He reminded me a lot of, of Graham Smith when, when, when he was leading the team. Even not just uh, with a bat, but he, he's always there, man. He's willing to take 300 knocks yeah. and still just, just fight through it. But also, we, we, I think we got a really great mental edge, and you mentioned that he's with um, Kane Williamson, their the fearless leader. You know, mm. not, 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 not playing call. Like, how, yeah. how much, for those who don't understand the impact of Kane Williamson, how much of a factor is it that he's not playing for the Black Caps? I think it's huge. You know, uh, I used to say he's the a most adaptable cricketer or batsman in the world. Him and Virat, they can play T20, they can play 50 over, and they can play test cricket and win matches for their country. So, I mean, he's their captain as well. So this is an enormous loss and a huge opportunity for South Africa to get another series win, which would make it four out of their last five. But this is what worries me, though, Dalen. Yeah, this, speak I, to I, me. I have a, I have a, this is my, my feeling that I'm scared is going to go down. Devin Conway. Devin Conway is a ex South yes. African. He's playing in a against his own. patch. <laughs> exactly. His test career is, I mean, he's only played five matches, but he's yeah. already scored three centuries, including a double hundred at Lords, and his average is close to 70. Now, Devin Conway himself will tell you, because before people say, oh, another player that we lost. No. Devin yeah. Conway was always thought of as a talented cricketer, like that could yes. go all the way. However, when his opportunities came in domestic cricket in South Africa, he floundered and he will admit that himself. So I just think he literally found a new home, a new environment, and he's thriving in that Kiwi mm. cricketing culture. So I am worried that he could potentially come uh, back to bite us. But I, I, was th I was thinking the same thing because there's no South Bean situation with, with Kevin Peterson when England played against South Africa. It was played up in the media. Um, Peterson publicly spoke spoke about um, the situation back home. But with Conway, he's been mm. the nicest. I mean, we've seen so many yeah. of the Proteus players tweet him <laughs> mm. after he scored his debut century for New Zealand. Like, yeah. there's been so much love for him from South Africa. Because he, I mean, the man was, he's a South African. He just went yes. there for professional reasons. He was trying to make it as an international cricketer in his home. It just didn't work out, unfortunately. And I love the way he's handled his... Uh, his new nationality, you know? Yes. Um, but I think we, what we must also, uh, by the time this podcast is released, I mean, the first day would be over. So he might be on 100 or we might have got him out. Um, we got him out for under 10 call, please. Okay. <laughs> Rab Rab Rabada let one pitch on middle and it swung away from him and he nicked him off. But you, you, you mentioned Conway, big, 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 big role to play in the Black Caps mm. batting department. We look at South Africa and I think a lot of us were... I think we were sad and disheartened when we found out Keegan Peterson tested positive oh, uh, for COVID-19. Yeah. He was player of the match, player of the series in the final test. And now now the yeah. big question, who's going to take that spot? Do we have Zupay Ramza, Ryan Rickleton, or Sadal Erwin? Twitter blew yeah. up. I tell you, uh, KP, uh, Keegan Peterson, he gave me life um, yes. during that India series. 
he was a great uh, i felt like he was a big part of my summer holiday although i didn't really take leave or anything but yes. i mean i was festive and i feel like he was a a very important part of why i felt festive and happy he's been uh absolute he's been enormous for south africa and we found our number three now it seems for the foreseeable future but who is going to replace him Judging from the media and what the boys are saying, uh, Dean Alga, it seems like Saddle Iovia will come into, into the side, batting number three. Now, we must remember that Saddle Iovia is an opener for the, the Dolphins in Durban. He's yes. scored bucket loads of runs for, for a couple of years now. So he's more than capable and he's earned a, a, a cap. He has earned, earned this cap. So let's not yes. get, it, get it twisted. Um, I would, he, it seems like he will be picked ahead of Zubair, Hamza, or Ryan Rickleton, and I totally understand that. Hamza needs to do a bit more, whereas Ryan Rickleton maybe bats a little bit uh, further down the order. But I'm excited. I always get excited when there's a debutant. But I think the other selection issues um, that will come up is how many are we going to play cash? Are we not now? The chatter from New Zealand is that they expect the, the, the pitch to be very green, uh, expect a lot of pace, and not much in it for the spinners. And Traditionally, historically, spinners haven't done very well there. So I, I'm not sure how, they, how they're going to select this. Are they going to... Because obviously our six batsmen are sorted, including the keeper, Calvarain. Then you've got Kakiso Rabada, Lungi Ngidi, Marco Janssen, Vian Mulder, Duan Olafir. Yeah. And you've, you've got five seamers now, but you basically... Are you going to play five seamers or are you going to have Kesh uh, come in for, let's say, Vian Mulder? For me, I I would play Kesh. To Always be play, with you. play Kesh, play Kesh. He's a wicket taker. Yeah. He's a match winner. He's a yeah. he's a match winner. You have to come on. We can't go in with old school approach of just seamers again, Louis. Uh, yeah, I agree. I look, but the the stats, the sta- the lo- logic will dictate that we don't need a spinner. The stats have said that. However, I I just think in Test cricket you need a spinner. Mm. Um, you can, if you can hold up an end. Yeah. yeah. Just I, I, wanted to f- I wanted to find out your thoughts on, on Simon Harmer going with taking two spinners on tour um, and having Harmer in the bank. Oh, and he's just his, his intro back into, into the squad yeah. after a, a while of a break. Because Good he was question. England. Good question. Look, I know many South African fans don't like Simon Harmer because he's very outspoken. Was he, sitting one- alone? Was, it, was he sitting alone on the plane? Did he have a, did he have someone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Nah, but I mean, him and Ashville Prince had some words in the past. Anyway, besides that, it can't be denied that Simon Armour is of an international quality. Yes. What I do worry about is how, with Simon Armour back, and I don't mind him being back, is now what happens to George Linder's career. I yes. feel like George Linder was a shoe in for the, for the T20 World Cup. He played well when it came to test matches as well. And then he was just, he's not part of the team anymore, you know. I I feel really bad for George Linder. Uh, That's my big Uh, concern. But to be honest with you, I'm okay with Simon Armour to answer your question. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm on the the same page as you. What's been frustrating for me is, and obviously players, I mean, I'm there for them getting caps, but it's been... Frustrating to see so many players being getting caps over the past, let's call it two years during Boucher's tenure, mainly because I'm going, what's the consistency that we're going for? Because we have players coming in and out. You mentioned Linda. So now he's out the fold. We've got Homer coming in. But you go, George has been showing us his quality with the bat and the ball in all formats. Um, he's doing really good work now in the in CSA's T20 Challenge. Uh, but in the longer format of the game, we know that he's there and he's been part of the system. So removing him from that when they're on the road, for me, I go, nah, I'm not sure yeah. what the logic is. Yes, Armour is yeah. a quality uh, spinner, like you mentioned, of international level. But where's our logic with building this unit? Like we mm. had when we were under the Smith era, we had a, that same unit with depth. You know what I mean? Mm. If we have replacements in the bank like Armour after Linda, we go, fantastic. Now we know you've got international standards waiting in the back mm. of the queue. But just give some consistency, especially even for the fans, because we're looking at it and going, yo, what's all this chopping and changing? What's going to happen yeah. when they come back home and they travel again? Do players know their fate? It's like Russian dude yeah. sometimes. And, and that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Look, I think we, uh, to end off the, um, the South, Af- South Africa versus New Zealand, uh, yeah. this, this section, 
I, I don't think Armour is going to play. So I don't think it's even going to be a factor. What I do want us to do, though, before we end of this section is when this is published, obviously, day one will be over. Let's give our predictions on what we think is going to happen on day one. Uh, if South Africa oh. bats or if South Africa bowls. So the, the, the toss goes up. You have yes. to do if, if New Zealand bats and I have to do if South Africa bats. So what's going to happen? New Zealand have, have won the toss. They've elected to bat. What's the, Ze- the score at day one? Close of play. I'm going with um, 222 for, for six at the close of play on day one. Look at me throwing out live sparks over here. Rabada led the Proteus bowling attack. Maharaj, Ksuma took three st- and Rabada took three, but the others were all economical. That's the worst prediction ever, but you know what? It's going to come through. So, so, just, so like, just let me, let me confirm that. It's 222 yeah. for six. Yes, yes. Okay. Fair very enough. slow. Very slow. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be tough conditions. Um, mm. South Africa. South Africa. Okay, so now Martins. If South Africa were to bat first. Yes. Um, whew, tough, tough, tough. I like your score that you came up with. Do you I, like my I, score? Yeah. I'm the worst at predictions, eh? Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to go for 267 for, for five. 267. And... I feel like there'll be a few early wickets. Dean Algo will, uh, uh, Dean Algo will score 70. Aiden Markram will be out early, unfortunately. I really hope he does <laughs> well. We all um, hope he does well. Don't put the markers on him. Yeah, so Asadal Iovia um, won't go. He'll, he'll play a great drive, but he, he won't score much. I feel like Bavuma will come settle things. Him and Rassi, they might get 40 each. One of them will be not out at the close of play. And either uh, Marco Janssen, uh, depending on selection, Marco Janssen and Vian Mulder will be batting with either Temba Bavumo or Rassi van der Dissen. Um, okay, I like that. Before we yeah. wrap up our main topic, can I just call you out as a sex boy, you that is, to say it's Marco Janssen. Please, each time you say Janssen, the Afrikaans okay. heart in me goes, can, can you just get, can you, I want to hear Janssen, please. Okay, Marco Janssen. There we go. The main topic wrapped up. Carl Lewis, let's move to the next one. We need to talk about it. Right, now that the main topic is wrapped up, we need to talk about this. It's hot off the press over the past couple of days and a bit. IPL deals, the Super Bowl, and the launch of F1 cars. Carl Lewis, let's speak IPL deals. People are making bank. Kajiso Rabada, highest paid South African, coming in at 18 bar. You're, you're life-changing yeah. all the time. Speak to yeah. me. Yeah, only, I'm a bit upset that only 10 players uh, were picked up in the auction. Uh, obviously, Kahisa Rabada deserve it of that 18, 18 million rand. I mean, Death Bowler, wickets up front, he can do it all, really. And he's super valuable. Very surprised by Faf Duplessis' high price. However, I mean, he was quality mm. last year for CSK, but now he's playing for RCB, which is yes. very interesting. And Quentin de Kock moves for less um, than Faf. He goes to the Lucknow Super Giants, a new uh, franchise. But I think the ones that really stand out would be Marco Janssen and, of course, Devald Brevis. Yes. Um, Devald Brevis, baby AB. I think South Africa's very, South African cricket fans are very excited about this lighty. And it's very easy to see why you watch, you, you watch, the, you watch him bat. I mean, even for the Titans, he scored a 50 now in the CSA T20 Challenge. The guy's hand speed and his hands, he really hits it so cleanly, like his idol. AB de Villiers, you totally get why he's called um, Baby AB. And I'm so excited about him in South African cricket. Like, I feel at this point in time, South African cricket, especially when it comes to 50 over cricket and T20, we lack that punch in the middle yes. overs. And yes. he has the ability to pick that up, you know. But one thing I was upset before, because we're not speaking about this for too long, the one thing yes. I was upset about is the Bray Shamsi and Imran Tahir. Not getting yes. uh, con- very surprising. I mean, Chamsey is the number one bowler in the world. However, I look at it. If I look at it a bit deeper, a lot of international wrist spinners were not picked up. Like quality international, Adil Rashid as well. I think um, wasn't picked up. Now this is clear that uh, the franchises 
are maybe focusing on all rounders uh, or or power hitters at the top of the order instead of spending too much money and taking up a overseas spot with a, a leg spinner. So they're going to trust their local spinners to do the job. So I, I think I needed to say that. No, it's important. I think that's also one of the reasons Marco Janssen got snapped up in the previous IPL, where they're looking for those uh, all-rounders who can hit a long ball at, at the back end. Um, before, we, yeah. before we wrap it up, Louis, I just want to give the numbers. You're fine with me giving the people the figures who are too lazy to Google it. Yeah. Cool. No, so I, I don't think the, it's necessary. I, mean, I okay. don't think it's necessary. Okay. I, think, uh, I, I just want to say one thing. Um, I, I wouldn't mind getting signed for the IPL and my life changing overnight. You know what I mean? Um, hey, well, I mean, you could have, because you, you could have, because you hit the ball, um, ve- I was going to swear, a huge, a big way. <laughs> and now I've lost my train of thought if I <laughs> yeah. can't swear. But uh, you can do the ball. <laughs> Let's be Thank honest. Thank you, God. Thank you. So if you, <laughs> if I don't know why you decided to take up comedy, because you could have been in the IPL as we speak, but the, no, I guess Carl. that's a topic for another day. <laughs> Carl Lewis, I wanted to make sure that I am doing a podcast with you. That's why I had a change of career. Okay, let's go to the Super Bowl. I'm going to be very childish when I say this, but I only watched it for the halftime show. Eminem, um, Dr. Dre turning up proper Snoop Dogg crib walking. We had Mary yeah. J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, what a performance. 50 Cent, a surprise performance. Upside down on the ceiling, very unfit as we could hear in his rap afterwards. Yeah. Um, yes. But, yeah. but I know you're a fan. You're a fan. Run me through it. Run us no. through it. You aren't that much of a fan. Well, I'm not going to be along in this. Uh, this is just, pure. I just put this in because I became so obsessed with NFL. This, like, I'm trying to learn a new sport every year. And this was my sport to get into. When ESPN left South African shows over a decade ago, I didn't have, I, I, I stopped watching. And now I'm back into it and really loving the sport. Yes, the Rams beat the Bengals, but that's not the point. I just feel like I want to say that I've grown a real respect for the sport. Yes, the stop start nature isn't really, doesn't really gel with South Africans, but the actual sport, the brutality, that's also a bit much, actually, because <laughs> these people do not know how to tackle. It's yes. scary. Huh? These Americans, they don't know how to tackle and they want to hurt people and concuss people. But that's beside the point. The technical aspect of football um, and the, the ability to make big plays and how they to- the, the content and how the Americans talk about their sports, I, it literally became an obsession. Every night I was watching NFL stuff. So... I want to say when the new season rolls in, we will be talking a lot of Super Bowl. Fantastic. You can come watch a lot of NFL and that's all I want to talk about. That's all you want to say. You can come watch a game by me. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to leave you in my place and then I'll go out and come back and we can we can have a bright inside in the early hours of the morning. What I do want yeah. to watch with you though is F1. I'm very excited about this season. Obviously for, for numerous reasons, the first um, race is on the 20th of March in uh, Bahrain and we have the first test in Barcelona, 23 to 25, Feb 2nd in Bahrain to 10 to 12 March. But this week is big. Ferrari um, will be launching their car on on Friday call and then Mercedes on Saturday. Why are we excited about Mercedes is obviously because of Lewis Hamilton. He's been very quiet and all, the appeal is still going on. Yeah. What's happening? What's happening? Well, I mean, I in my other podcast, uh, my Pet Central podcast, I went into depth on previewing the season and also the new car regulations because it's a it's yes. a completely new car. They look, they're hoping uh, with this new design, they're hoping for better racing. There's also bigger tires, things like that. Um, but you speaking about the car launches, which is huge. I mean, Red Bull did theirs and they, as usual, their car looks absolutely beautiful as the Sexy, does eh? Aston oh. Martin and Al- Alfa Tori. I think the Red Bull cars, I, I always like. But there was a bigger announcement in Formula Tell 1. Tell me! Tell me! Drive to Survive premieres 11th of March. Yes. That's Carl Lewis. For me, that's the big story. That's yes. the big story, really. I mean, I cannot wait, especially the season last season. I mean, yes. uh, that is like a, a script written by Hollywood, you know? And I mean, well, whatever... Yeah? yeah? No, no, you no. Go. go for it. Go for it. The Hollywood script. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Uh, and I, I, it was like a, that last season, it was, I mean, it took so much emotion out of me. And I can only imagine because uh, it's very polarized, the F1 supporting scene. You either on Max's side, you're on Lewis's side and it's getting yes. super toxic, like um, almost like football, to be very honest with you. 
And I know Lewis Hamilton's fan and even Max Verstappen fans probably needed a break after last season because, I mean, they were just naked. How can you be level on points, come to the final um, yeah. a race of the season and then it's decided on the final lap? Unfairly or fairly, that's up to your interpretation. For me, <laughs> it didn't seem right. It didn't yes. seem right. I'll be honest with you. Um, but wow, in terms of just a spectacle and drama and intrigue, Formula One just absolutely delivered. And now they've got Drive to Survive just to drive all of that home. Uh, best, piece, best piece of sports marketing we've seen in the last yeah. ever, to be honest yes. with you. They, they, they've just got a totally new audience. Women are suddenly um, interested, more women rather, are suddenly more are interested in the sport. And it's just incredible what this series and this great piece of content has done. So it premieres the 11th of March. I'm excited about it because I'm one mm -hmm. of those people who converted. I know you told me about Drive to Survive and thank you for that call, Lewis. I appreciate you. That's how oh, yeah, we wrap up um, our segment called We Need to Talk About It. We're learning how to do stuff in five to seven minutes. Next up, who's hot? Let's go. Okay, who's hot? I'm excited to hear your thoughts about this. Carl Kylian Mbappe, easy PSG. He creates all the plays. He gets Messi a penalty. Then Messi doesn't slot the penalty. Then he decides, listen here, I need to score in the last dying stages of this Champions League last 16 first leg tie to make sure we beat Real Madrid 1-0. Speak to me. Yeah, before I get into Kylian Mbappe, yes, M Messi missed the penalty. And I think we can all recognize that Messi and Ronaldo's kind of on the way, <laughs> on the downwards, not spiral. <laughs> On yes. the downward trending. But, uh, and people are making jokes that Mbappe is saving Messi. Messi has saved so many people in this competition yes, and yes. in La Liga. So he deserves to be, to be rescued. But getting on to our actual topic, Kylian before, Mbappe. Before, wait, before yeah. we get there, before we get there, I love how you just jumped into say, Dalen, you're not throwing shade to the goat Messi today. I'll protect him. And well done. I appreciate you for that. That's my goat. I think he's the, the greatest player that ever lived. And I mean, I just, that's my personal opinion. I know there's Ronaldo fans there. I can't speak on Pele and Maradona because, I mean, I'm yes. young. I didn't see them. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Says the 34 year old who's turning 35 <laughs> and losing hair. And losing hair, yes. But tell us about Mbappe. <laughs> yeah, I just think this guy is he's potentially the most exciting footballer to watch for me i mean even before it, his monaco time i mean people like to call him a pace merchant but i mean this guy has absolutely phenomenal feet uh he knows how to set up players he knows how to score goals i just think he him he is going to he's the new breed and i think we can all agree on that that he is taking over the throne of ronaldo and messi whether erling Haaland is going to join him uh, and a few others that remains to be seen. And I mean, he scored a last-minute winner last night against the club that he is definitely joining at the end of the season. I almost have no doubt that he will be a Real Madrid player unless PSG offer him a bumper contract. But I don't think it is even about that for him. So this season, it hasn't been his craziest season, but he's still the top scorer for PSG. 12 goals, 9 assists in 21 uh, league matches. And then in the Champions League, 5 goals, 4 assists. So he genuinely is their main man. Neymar's injured a lot. Yes, he's the most expensive player. He's injured a lot. Messi is still settling in. Uh, and obviously, he's not as uh, thorough and as potent as he once was. So this guy is the king of Paris. And I just want to let everyone know that for me, he is the most exciting player in world football. Fantastic. And I trust your opinions. That's how I'm doing a podcast with you. So if I'm a betting person, Mbappe is where my money is going to be at. Another young, exciting talent in the world of sport as we, as we shift to cricket, Carl. Tristan Stubbs, Meichenada, 21-year-old yeah. lad from the Warriors, yeah. doing the most in CSA's T20 Challenge. Can murder ball. Yo, Dalen, I mean, you, <laughs> as someone who knows how to, to hit a ball, how impressive is this boy's power hitting? Yeah, nah, he's, he's, he's a murderer. He's a murderer. Look, <laughs> look I, I, I mean, I, I saw on Twitter a few years ago that, look, we need to watch out for this Tristan Subs kid. So he's played four games in the CSA T20. He scored 51, 21, 18 not out, and 65. He's only played in those four games. He's got the most runs in the competition. His strike rate is over 200. I mean, after four innings, That's his proper. strike rate is over. 
That's insane. Also, yeah. also, he's hit 19 sixes in this competition. Do you know who's second? David Miller. He's only got 10. This guy has been nothing short of phenomenal. And you know, we spoke about Deval Brevis adding that punch um, in the middle. This guy can do exactly the same. South African, uh, the one thing South Africa will never struggle with is talent. There's so much yes. talent in this country. And, you know, I'm open to giving this dude, uh, I'm not saying go play him now, but this guy needs to be around the national team because yes. I am yes. so, I'm so worried. I look at him and Deval Brevis and they natural hitters, natural power hitters. And there's, outside of David Miller, there is not much to ride home about. Rassi van der Dersen can do that now and then, but he's a proper batsman, man. He's not yeah. like a power hitter. So Tristan Stubbs, Deval Brevis, they potentially might be important cricketers in South African cricket, but I had to give this boy his due because he lit up the CSA T20 Challenge, which I've been enjoying. It's been so lekker to watch. Wayne now also playing well. But yeah, Tristan Stubbs, we need to remember the name. We need to take note of this boy and we need to take care of this boy. Moving on, there was a topic yeah. that you want to speak to about who is hot. Can yes, Carl, Carl, there is. I'm very excited um, because I, I, I've been watching it online over the past uh, week and a bit. And Vasco da Gama, ladies, can I get the horn for them, please? <laughs> yes, so um, they've officially uh, gained promotion to the Hollywood Bets Super League. That's the pinnacle of, of, of club women's football in South Africa. And they did this over the weekend up in um, in Durban. They were crowned Sasa League national champions. Um, they beat City Lads FC from the Eastern Cape 4-3. And this this is great wow. for for Cape Town football, for Cape Town women's football. We know Vasco oh. has been an iconic club for so many years in different spaces in, in the mother city. Um, yeah, they were in, in the DSTV Premiership. Well, it was then the, the APSA Premiership a while back in, in the men's department. And just for them to gain promotion now, I think is a really hard thing, especially for, for the mother city. We're always speaking about how much talent we have and how to yeah. see that talent actually going to results, you know? It's I want to I I uh, put in my... Uh, two cents here. Of course. Uh, Cape Town football, Mother City football needed this. Oh my word, do they need this? Because uh, on the club side, in terms of the men's, uh, I mean, yes, Stellenbosch are doing well. A credit yes. to them. I, I like what they're doing. Uh, Cape Town City, uh, they, you know, they're in limbo at the moment. You know, after mm. a really hot start, they, um, they won a cup competition. They were in there and thereabout with the league. Benny left and... You know, the, the buzz around the team is just not the same. COVID obviously doesn't help. And then obviously the decline of Ice Cape Town, I think that's a story for us to talk about uh, in future <laughs> with people yes. who know a bit more. Yes, um, yes. But Cape Town football needed this. It's just sad to see our best players having to go play elsewhere, firstly to earn the money that they, they, they need, but also to play for a big club because, I mean, we, we, there's no like big club. Yeah, we need to watch out for, yes. for this club. You know, uh, uh, Cape Town football, specifically from a men's point of view, is really struggling. So for Vasco to kind of have a good story out of this, I love to see it. Yeah, well done, man. Also, shout out to player of the tournament and top goal scorer, Michelle Minis. I think she ended up with six, if I'm not mistaken. And then the goalie as well, Jessica Williams. So yeah, before we wrap up our who's hot topic, Stormers, we have to give them a mention, Carl. In the last seven matches they've played, they drew two, lost one, and won four. Over the weekend, a bonus point win over the Lions. we where we need to be. Highest ranked yeah. South African side in the uh, Vodacom United Rugby Championship yes. in seven. I'm happy. Yes. I'm happy. Yes, finally the ship. Finally, uh, the guys are are playing for Dobbo. I mean, I yes, I, I, I love Paul Dobson. Uh, always, but there was a time where I was like, this guy needs to go. He's just not getting results. I mean, John it's just, John it's, John Dobson, John John Dobson, not his um, Paul Dobson. I always say he's for. I feel I know, like I've made I this mistake on the our we, show previously. Yes, yes, you did it um, with uh, attempt at the sports show, and that's fine. I, you're you're he's, in the right place. Yeah, because his father wrote something really nice about my rugby playing days at school. You wrote something really nice about me. So that's why I man. think I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. Anyway, <laughs> the Stormers, it's so impressive to, to see them finally, I mean, because they've got great players. We Always. The Stormers aren't lacking in terms of personnel, but to, uh, to beat the Bulls, surprised everyone, to beat the Sharks two weeks in a row, like you said, their, their record in the last seven games is enormous. But what I did want to focus on was in their last match against the Sharks, the back line that they had, Mani Lebok at 10. Finally, they played David Willems at 12. Something yes. I particularly wasn't for initially, 
But with Wadi Kalant at 15 playing so well, this boy get Wadi Kalant in that Springbok side once again. Yes. Because this kid is just, Boogie is jawling. He is playing such good rugby. And apparently you'll be going to Racing. They're offering him a like seven over seven million rand a year. But, good money. Yeah, and and I I encourage our players to go. Yes, Jason yes. Colby earning great money. His game has improved. Puff uh, de Klerk went to sale. His game has improved. All these oaks that go overseas, their game improved, new environments, learning new things, they become better players, they develop this better. So I encourage South Africans, especially the guys of color, get overseas, man. Go yeah, earn go your make, money. Go make but that I, money. I, I wanted to m- just mention something on the Stormers Fly of Mani Lebok. He's now yes. been around at a few provinces, a few franchises, the Sharks, the Bulls. But he seemed to have settled now. And the I don't think people believe he's a, he's a fly that you can rely on and maybe win a competition with. And that remains to be seen. However, I feel like he's put my doubts to bed because the Stormers have played their best rugby with him at number 10. And I'm yes. including a loss against Munster last year because the first half, the, that's still their best half of rugby that they ever played was against Munster in Ireland last year. And he was the fly there as well. But I just need to give him credit because I doubted him if he's a reliable fly and he's really proving me wrong at the moment. And I want to give props to Mani Labak. He is, is, is getting the Stormers side to play properly, to play good rugby. And I just think he's controlling the game better. And he's super talented, you know? He's just crazy talented. But that was never in question for me. It was more the consistency. And now he's very consistent. So I want to give props to the Stormers, to Mani Labak in particular, Wari Kalant also, but just the Stormers in general. I love that. And, and for me personally, what, what I love is the way in which you're being exposed more through, through the United Rugby Championship. Obviously, when we had the Southern Hemisphere sides playing against each other, but now South North, there's just so many factors. When you're playing that side, you're somewhat playing against the ref. And, and I'm yeah. here for that because we're only going to get better. And maybe that's been one of the factors that's contributed to Lebok taking the, the seniority and responsibility that, that he has. Also, I know this wasn't in the prep initially, but can we give a shout out to Brock Harris? 100 caps. The man is just a machine. <laughs> it's just a machine. I'm glad, can we? I'm, I'm glad you said that, Dalen. Because you know when Brock Harris used to play for the Stormers like a decade ago, yes. uh, some of my friends and I, we used to make fun and call him the moonlighting accountant because he looked more like an accountant yes. than a rugby player. <laughs> but He's to such play... A kid. <laughs> But to play 100 games for the Stormers and over 350 professional games. And I mean, he's been an inspired signing ever yes. since his debut and on his return for the Stormers. He's been scrumming so well, putting in massive shifts. And I, I, I'm so glad you brought that up actually, Dalen, because he deserves his praise as well. Can we get an award for it? <laughs> Okay, Louis, so we wrapped up uh, Who's Hot. Very excited about that. But we have an exciting weekend ahead of us. The benefits of recording something on a Wednesday. What are you looking forward to, my friend? There's a couple of things. Uh, first off, I'm going to start off with uh, Super Rugby uh, Pacific. Obviously, yes. there's, uh, there's two new, the Fijian side and the Samoan side. Um, and they really, I'm hoping that this will be fen- beneficial to the nations like Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, and that, you know, being in a competition yes. like this will, will It's very important. They, rugby. Play, they play gun rugby. If they had a proper competition like they're going to have yes. now, then we know and they're on the winning foot. And what, it's like almost like colonialism in a way. They produce all these fantastic rugby players, individual rugby players. And because the, there's no money in Fiji, Samoa, yeah. or Tonga. Without they the just structure. Pick, yeah. And they just pick. And suddenly you're playing for, um, you're playing for France, you're playing for England, uh, you're playing for New Zealand. <laughs> So yes. I, 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 that, that's what's my main um, take out or the main thing I'm looking out for for Super Rugby uh, Pacific. Then if I move to soccer, there's Manchester City Spurs. I am really, I, I'm, I'm keen to see that. I'm keen to see, because, so here's my thing with, uh, with Antonio do you think Spur- he's a winner. Do you, mm, do you think Spurs yeah. can pull it back because they haven't had the greatest league run over the past couple? I don't know. And I'm begi- <laughs> I, thought, I thought Antonio Conte is, was unbreakable. The but mastermind. I'm, mm. I'm almost thinking that Spurs are so cursed that they're going to break this man. 
They are going to break this one. I'm serious, bro. I'm serious. I'm worried for Antonio Conte. Um, oh, my word. That, that so is I, a great so, line. That, that yeah. is a great line. <laughs> so I'll be checking how Spurs get on because, you know, Antonio Conte he knows how to motivate teams. Yes, but, I mean, yes. The Spurs side, and, and, the, and Marino said it in the Amazon documentary, they lack, a, they lack something. They're not winners. They, they give in too quickly. So I'll be watching the Man City Spurs game. Uh, we spoke about the rugby. Obviously, there's supposed to be cricket going on. Yes. Uh, I'm always going to watch cricket. But outside of the test cricket with South Africa, New Zealand, there's also a T20s, Australia, Sri Lanka, and India, West Indies, which I will be keeping my eye on. There's no NFL this weekend, which I'm bleak about because I really would have spoken about that. But that's kind of where most of my um, attention will be, uh, I'd say. Nice, nice. I'm going to go watch a Kerem competition in 6th Avenue Retreat. Shout out to <laughs> the 7945. <laughs> and while we're there, we'll watch all the sports that you mentioned. But yes, we're on the same page. I'm actually going to laugh now. I'm going to message all my Spurs friends and say, I never knew that you could break it on your Conte. <laughs> if you take anything from this podcast, now that Spurs broke a whole... You, a whole coach who is great and they broke him that's amazing. no well oh, they could break him i'm saying <laughs> nah, it's he's close bro- he's bro he's broken already <laughs> i'm worried bro i'm worried I, I, like spurs is that curse that they yeah that they've got this manager who's known for winning known for getting results and getting results like that um, yes and now they shouldn't suddenly- have built a new stadium they shouldn't have built a new stadium blame the stadium Hey, that's a beautiful stadium, though. Yo, wow. There we go. You can't just get nice things, Carl. You have to earn them by winning trophies. You can't just give people nice <laughs> things. If you don't win trophies, you don't get the nice stadium. Come on, they should know this. Anyway, I think this is a great start to the sports podcast with myself, Dalen Oliver, and Carl Lewis. Our first one, can we just clap for ourselves for committing to this, first of all? Well done, bro. Yay, yay. Hopefully, Durant. Durant is our producer. I think we also need yes. to make mention of that. Durant is our producer and we'll be mentioning his name quite often uh, throughout this podcast series. And if you hear say Durant cut that out, it's because we just left that in and it shouldn't have been. And it means he's not doing his job properly. (laughs) But we are tech professional. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So we we have to do this weekly and and I think it is a great start. Um, Oh, this is very important for us. If you have any feedback, any comments, any stuff you'd like us to talk about, please pop Mm. them in the comments section as soon as we drop the the podcast we'd love your feedback and we appreciate you guys shot for being dead like away